Hello, everybody. Mike, you were the one, one of the more outspoken fighters when, when you thought you weren't going to get to do media to say, no, I want to go do it. Yeah. Sometimes I feel like you guys hate doing this stuff. So why was it so important for you to, to have this opportunity? Because the last media day, I was such a fucking dud. <laughs> the last media day, I was just, I was felt like shit, man. I mean, I really, as you know, you know, I missed weight, that weight cut. That was a really, that was a really trying week for me going through everything with the broken foot, trying to push myself to make the weight cut instead of withdrawing from the fight. So I was like, man, I'm excited to get back in front of the cameras, a little, little more energy, feel a little better, um, you know, and I'm excited, man. I feel like this is a, even with everything going on, I'm, I still feel really good about this week. I feel really good about this fight. Can you compare how you feel right now versus how you normally feel on a Thursday? I'll tell you right now, I could, if I had to go fight right now, I could go fight. Last, that last Thursday in July, <laughs> I couldn't fight my way out of bed. <laughs> you know what I mean? So uh, it's, just, it's just a night and day difference. And I can honestly say, you know, I got to solidify this decision to everyone else by winning on Saturday. But to myself, internally and with my team, we know that I'm a welterweight. Now, there's no going, you can't pay me enough money to go back down to 55. That's what I was going to, because it's interesting, right? I mean, knowing that you feel this great, knowing that you feel better about your body, I mean, does the result have to show that you made the right decision? Or do you already know you made the right decision? I already know I made the right decision. You know what I mean? I got to fight a freaking former two-time champion you know what I mean so if things don't go my way like dude it's, it's a tough guy you know what I mean but you know I'm very prepared for this fight I, very, I feel very confident I'm going to get the win um, you know but Carlos is a dangerous guy but winning or losing isn't going to validate the decision to myself I already know this is right but to the rest of the world I want to show that I am a welterweight now I am here and the goal stays the same moving up the rankings moving towards the title becoming world champion can you imagine going through what has been going through this week if you were trying to get down to 155? Dude, it would be a nightmare. It'd be, it would be, it would really stress me out a lot. I mean, just having to travel again and, you know, like, when, you, when, when I'm making that weight cut down to 55, just the smallest task seems like such a, such a chore, you know? So having to repack my bags and having to figure out, you know, the hotel situation, all that, it would just, it would wear me out. It would stress me out more. And the more you stress out, the harder the weight cut gets. And, um, you know, I'm almost, I'm kind of mad at myself that I didn't make this decision a lot sooner. It's just hard when, as you're climbing the rankings in a weight class, to all of a sudden jump ship and go somewhere else, you know. But it's, at the end of the day, I'm, I'm starting to learn, and I'm learning this through my peers, especially Anthony Smith. You know, seeing him make the jump is the one that really got my brain turning, like, dude, maybe I need to do this, you know. So I'm almost mad at myself for not doing it sooner, but I'm glad that I'm here now. I'm in my prime. I'm, I just turned 31 years old. I feel like my best years are ahead of me, and my best years are going to be at welterweight. This may seem like a silly question, but why do fighters cut weight? I mean, ultimately, at the end of the day, why, why does everybody put themselves through this? Well, I think for myself personally, when I fought my very first fight, it was like June 5th, 2008. It was my first fight. And, you know, I was, I was, I was a 55-pounder. I walked around at 160. I fought at 55. So as you get older, you just – as you get bigger, you still fight in the same weight class. So that's just kind of where I think a lot of these guys get stuck in a rut, staying in the same weight classes. That's where you start and you spend so much time there. You just keep finding a way to make it down. Um, you know, but when I saw guys like Whitaker and Gastelum start to have success at 185, it got my attention. But it was when Anthony Smith made the jump that I was like, it was, he, did, he did an interview that I saw on the underground and he was just talking about how he felt for his weight cuts, things that were going on and for, with himself physically. and how he felt in his fights. And I was like, dude, that's exactly, that's exactly how I feel. And this guy just plucked off two former world champions very, very smoothly, and he beat Vulcan Ozdemir. I was like, okay, I gotta try it. You know what I mean? And now, now knowing going through this camp and being just a few days away from the fight, now I know this is the right decision. It was hard at first. It's hard, like, I'm gonna go up and fight bigger guys. It's kind of a scary thought, you know what I mean? You think about the Usmans and the Covingtons and all these tough guys at 70, but I mean, two weeks into this camp, I was like, oh yeah, I'm, I'm ready for these guys. Let's do this. This is, this is the right decision. So yeah, I'm very happy to be where I'm at right now. Well, the right decision comes against, like you said, I mean, a former champion of such, but he's been through some hard times, coming from a couple losses now. Do you feel that like fighting him now, maybe it doesn't necessarily have exactly the same sting that it would a couple years ago? To a casual fan, maybe, you know what I mean? But for me, um, I'm, a, I'm a true MMA fan. And, uh, you know, real recognized, real Carlos Condit's about as tough as they get, you know what I mean? And, and I'm not just saying this as another young guy that's going up against a, a former champion. You know, the guy's a legend. You can't say he's not. But I have pictures from when I was 21 years old wearing my sinister, natural-born killer walkout T-shirt. 
I'm a true fan of the guy. I respect him a ton and it made it easier for me to prepare for such a tough opponent because I recognize how dangerous he is. I recognize his skills. I've been watching him. I don't have to watch film on Carlos Condit to know how good he is. I've, I've been a fan of him since pretty much since he got in WEC. So um, it's an honor to fight the guy, but I have to beat him, end of the day. That's, that's just what has to happen. Do you see any patterns or anything like that in those last couple of fights that maybe you could, you know, like you're thinking, oh, I mean, there's things I see I'm not going to divulge, but my game plan is always going to stay the same. You know what I mean? If I sat here in front of, in front of you guys and said, well, I'm, I'm just going to keep it on the feet and stand and bang, you guys would probably be like, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> no, the game, for me, the game plan is the same, man. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do what I do, make it, it go forward, make it ugly, and get a win. You know, that's just, that's just how I fight. Nothing changes. Um, but there, you know, watching film, there is things that we were able to break down. They're not something I want to divulge to the public. And same for him. I'm sure they watched a bunch of my film and, and broke some things down. And we, we both got game plans going into the fight. And nothing left to do but lay it on the line and just made a better man win. Is it cool getting that call about a guy like Carlos? Like, I mean, I don't want to play basketball against LeBron. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, like, you got a call, you know, saying you have to fight one of your, you know, I don't want to say heroes, but a guy you really admire. That's got to be cool. No, he is. I mean, I'd be a liar if I said he isn't one of my heroes. My very first uh, guest fighter, my first guest fighter appearance was three days after I got off the Ultimate Fighters in Fort Lauderdale. And I was just buddied up with Carlos Condit for the day, and I was just like, <laughs> hey, what's up? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, he's just that guy, you know? And uh, um, it was, when I got the call, I'm like, this is perfect. You know what I mean? This, this is what I want. I don't want to come up a weight class and fight. You know, everybody's tough, but I want to fight guys with names. I want to, you know, I want to pursue my goal. I want to get to a world title. And a guy like Carlos Condit, th those are the fights you have to get to get there. And, uh, you know, I'm just excited for the opportunity to fight him for sure. What about now the fight with Last the tax question. man? Huh? What about the fight with the tax man? He's going to take some money from me. He wasn't going to before. The tax man always takes your money. I'm not, you know what? I'm not too stressed about that right now. Yeah, it sucks. But, I mean, it's the same as when I fought in New York. Um, you know, it, it's not, uh, Dana said it best. We're all taking losses here right now. Doesn't mean I'm okay with it. Doesn't mean I'm stoked on it. You know what I mean? But it's just something we got to deal with. I think that everybody needs to focus on the fight. I think a lot of the fighters and a lot of the media, I think we're all, there is a lot of negatives to dwell on in this situation, but we need to focus on the fight. We got a great card ahead of us. A lot of these guys need to focus on competing. And I, I think that, that too much pressure is being put on the ops team. Like everyone's flipping out about like, I'm losing money on my hotels, my Airbnbs. I flew my team in taxes, this, that. It's like, dude, they're just trying to get us to California first. You know what I mean? So I think that everybody needs to focus on the fight. Let's get through the weekend and figure things out from there. You know what I mean? It's, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a really crummy situation, but you know, we got to focus on what's important, and that is UFC 232. Only on pay-per-view. Only on pay-per-view. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Mike. Thanks, Mike. Yes, sir.